Hello YouTube and welcome to an all new Elder Scrolls lore video. This time a bit of a short video as we'll be talking about the Butcher of Breville, the Imperial commander who killed more than half of the citizens of Breville, a town which was on her side during the war. So without any further ado, let's talk about her story. So today we're talking about the story of Captain Jaina Apinia, also known under the infamous nickname the Butcher of Breville. She was a commander of the Imperial Legion during the opening stages of the Three Banners War, the war in Cyrodiil where the three major alliances, the Old Mary Dominion, the Daggerfall Covenant and the Ebonard Pact, fight over control of the central province during the events of the Elder Scrolls Online. Now I covered the whole lead up to the war and the relevant opening stages of the war in my video on the Elder Scrolls Online's main story. And thus I highly recommend watching that first, or at least the first half of that video first, which is in the description of this video so you know the full context to the war and know the reason why shit hit the fans so badly around that time. Because the opening stages of the Three Banners War also marked the beginning of the Plain Melt, where the Daedric Prince Molek Ball attempted to invade Tamriel with his Daedric minions and attempted to merge the Mortal Plane with his own Daedric Plane of Cold Harbor using his Dark Anchors. Now, Captain Jaina Apinia's story starts around this time because she was a commander of a unit in the Imperial Legion which had been fighting against the three alliances, trying to keep them away from the Imperial City. But as we covered in the main quest video, this was a fruitless effort as Cyrodiil was being invaded from three sides and due to several badly executed wars in the years before, the Imperial Legion was badly prepared and ill-equipped. This meant that the three alliances overran Cyrodiil in a matter of days and most legions, including Jaina Apinia's unit, retreated back to the Imperial City where Empress Regent Clivia Tharn and the Imperial Law still ruled. Now, she and her unit were taking a rest on the Imperial Isle after several tough battles against the troops of the alliances. They needed to be re-equipped and the wounded needed to be taken care of. When the unit's revalidation was almost complete and they were making ready to rejoin the battle for the Isle, suddenly Molek Ball's dark anchors fell from the sky and his Daedric minions started to besiege the city. While the remaining Imperial legions held a last stand on the city's wall and its districts, Jaina Apinia and her unit decided to flee from the city instead when the dark anchors fell and the Daedric minions invaded. The captain justifies this in her memoirs by saying that it was an enemy that nobody understood and that the goal was to survive and then fight another day, when there was more of a chance for victory. Imperial High Command and the citizens called her a coward for it, especially since some legions remained to fight, although there were also those who immediately defected and started helping Molek Maul, but that's a story for another day, specifically for the next video when we'll be talking about the fall of the Imperial City. Anyway, Jaina, Apinia and her legion managed to escape the Imperial City, but in their retreat from the city they did not bring enough supplies for the prolonged survival in the wild, as the city had been in chaos and the retreat had been rushed so they didn't take a lot of supplies. This meant that despite they were alive and retreating, they would not last long in the field, especially as both Daedra and Alliance armies were roaming the fields of Cyrodiil and any encounter with them would be fatal. So Jaina decided that the best course of action would be to go to the city of Breville, which was still nominally under Imperial control, and then demand the city's supplies to feed her legions. Unsurprisingly, the leader of Breville, which curiously enough was named as a mayor and not a count, uh, was not enthusiastic by this proposition when the captain and her legion arrived and demanded their supplies. Now, Jaina and Pinia argued to the mayor that it was their duty to aid them for the welfare and glory of the empire, but the mayor refused their request, telling the captain off by saying that their supplies were already low and that what they had was desperately needed to keep the citizens alive and keep them from starving to death. Now, the captain then made an offer, since taking their supplies would mean half of the city would starve to death, the captain offered that she and her men would simply kill half of the citizens now and then take the supplies anyway to be done with it. Strangely enough, in her memoirs, Jaina Apinia really seems not to understand why the mayor and the citizens took such an offense to this proposition. She said that by killing them she would do the town a service by enabling the remains of the town to survive despite having their supplies taken. Obviously the town did not see it that way and once word of the captain's proposition reached the citizens, the citizens took to arms and took it upon themselves to kill the captain and her legion. 
But unfortunately, regular citizens are no match for trained soldiers, so it became a big slaughter where more than half of the citizens of the city, including the mayor, were killed, after which Jane Opinia and her legion looted the city and took almost all valuable items that they could from the city, in addition to the city's supplies. They even took stuff like the city's official seal, all its tax ledgers and the mayor's signet ring. This murder and the looting then earned Jane Apinia the nickname the Butcher of Breville and left the town in shambles. Now, days after her sacking the city, the troops of the Old Mary Dominion annexed Breville without much resistance as they found it weakened and in mourning. The Dominion troops then reported the story of how the Butcher had raided the city to Queen Irene of the Old Mary Dominion who decided that what Captain Apinia had done constituted a war crime and that the people of Breville, as long as they were under the Dominion's rule, would have her help finding justice. And as such she sent one of her top agents, or Eyes of the Queen, the agent Rosendar, after the Butcher to kill her and then also kill the man who helped her raid the city. Now, in the meantime, Captain Jaina Apinia had heard that she was being hunted down by the Dominion and thus had sent most of her legion away back to Cyrodiil's heartland to rejoin the main forces while she and some of her most loyal soldiers went into hiding with their ill-found treasures, hiding from the agents of the Altmere Dominion. Now, they ended up finding protection under the Gold Coast Trading Company, the same trading company then under the control of the Pirate Queen Fortunata Abdugal. A video on her is in the description if you want to know more. Now, they likely gained protection from them by giving them part of their ill-found treasure, or well, actually looted treasure from Reveal. You as the player can then help the Dominion agents Rosamdar locate the captain and her followers and then kill them in order to find justice for Breville citizens. The ironic thing is that up until the very end Captain Jaina Apinia did not see how she did anything wrong, saying that she just acted out of necessity. Although I would personally say that she did went a bit out of bounds by killing more than half of the citizens and, you know, saying that she would kill half of them to take their supplies, so... Yeah, I don't know. I don't think she was right. That said, that was the story of the Butcher of Breville, and I hope you enjoyed learning about it. Now, today was a bit of a short video. Next week we'll talk about the story of the fall of the Imperial City. I, pro I know that I promised it for this weekend, but it needed a bit more work, so... We'll talk about that next week. But for now, all that rests me is to thank you for watching, and I hope that you learned something new today about the Elder Scrolls lore, and if you did, maybe consider returning next weekend when I probably make another video. And now, all that rests me is to vocally thank my top Patreon supporters, Mr. Bernardo Binda, Gabriel Binda, Polarized Patin, Athena, Iotis, King Chris, Bolts, Scrap of the Scrolls, Doji, Fenrir, Sword of Bushido, Rakai, Zarmakal, and Mr. Christmas. It's thanks to these people and all the others on screen that this channel stays alive, and for that, I'm very grateful. That said, I hope to see all of you in the next Elder Scrolls lore video. Bye-bye.